Hi, my name is Christian Hernandez from the Clap Platforms Business Unit over at Red Hat. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to build a GitOps workflow using Kubernetes native CI CD tools. Here, I have an OpenShift 4.7.1 cluster, which is running Kubernetes 1.20 that I'm going to be using for this demonstration. And here I have a sample application. This sample PHP application uh, for testing purposes has a uh, container file, Docker file that'll be used for container builds in order to build this application. And I also have a um, deployment repository here. This deployment repository is my GitOps repository on how I'm going to keep this application continuously in sync in my cluster. So to get started, I'm gonna go ahead and install the OpenShift GitOps operator by going to the operator hub and typing in OpenShift GitOps. Oops, if I spell that right. There it goes. Clicking install and accepting the defaults. This will um, go ahead and install the Red Hat OpenShift GitOps operator. So the OpenShift Red Hat, uh, the Red Hat OpenShift GitOps operator, um, what it is, it's a sort of meta operator. This operator installs uh, Argo CD and Tecton in order for me to use in my CI CD pipeline. So once the operator is up and running, I can go ahead and look at my installed operators, making sure I'm in the OpenShift GitOps namespace. I can see that it installs the ability to do an Argo CD and a uh, Tecton pipeline. So if I click here and look at my Argo CD instance, this installs an instance of Argo CD. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to um, make some customizations uh, for my current workflow. So first, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna, instead of typing this out, I'm gonna copy and paste it. I'm going to uh, patch the uh, the instance of Argo CD to ignore uh, um, routes, OpenShift routes, because um, in my Git GOPS repo, I am not uh, specifying the routes. I just let the platform create them for me. Also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up an OpenShift policy to allow um, the Argo CD service account access to my um, application. Next. Uh, I'm going to delete the pods, right? So I'm going to delete the pods in order for it to uh, reset everything, um, especially since I'm uh, uh, updating roles and um, config maps. Um, I'm going to delete the pod so that way it'll um, it'll kick off here. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, install seal secrets, right? Um, installing seal secrets allows me, uh, allows the platform to um, decrypt some of the secrets I have uploaded in, um, in the Git repo. So while that's going, I'll show you some other configurations I've done. In my, um, in my application repo, I've actually sh uh, set up a webhook. This webhook uh, triggers a Tecton pipeline anytime I make a commit uh, to a specific branch. In this specific um, example, uh, I'm going to be using the main branch, um, but you can make it listen to whatever branch you want to. Going off here, double checking, uh, still secret, still waiting for oops for it to come back up. Um, let's talk a little bit about my um, uh, my GitOps repo, my deployment repo, right? So there's there's a few things here. Um, I'm leveraging customize. Here, customize is um, I have a base repo where all this, um, all the manifests here are the same no matter which environment I'm deploying in. Um, and then I'm utilizing overlays um, for different environments, right? So I have the dev version, which takes the base configuration and then patches them for uh, this specific environment. For example, I'm installing uh, this application, the dev. Um, application in the dev namespace, and I'm also um, patching the deployment to use a specific version of, of this image. Same for the production. The production, um, what I'm overlaying is the same. I'm deploying in a different namespace, and then I am uh, using a specific image tag, right? So um, I can use the same deployment config across multiple environments and I'm 
leveraging customize in order to uh, change that depending on the environment I'm in. So going back here, see the seal secrets is installed. I can go ahead now and uh, deploy my repo. Again, I'm gonna be using uh, customize to deploy my application repo. So let me clear this. Oops. There we go. Um, I'm gonna be using customize uh, to override the default um, uh, namespace because I'm using the OpenShift uh, GitOps operator. And then I'm just going to use customize build and apply this to the uh, to the cluster. So as you see here, it created three different environments. Um, welcome dev, welcome prod, right, for, for my development um, environment and for my production environment. And then I have a, uh, a different namespace for my pipeline, right? And so... Um, in order to see what's going on here, let's actually log into the Argo CD interface first. Let's get the password from a secret. I will then uh, open this here, um, integrated um, UI here that will take me to the, uh, oops, that's not what I wanted. There it goes. Let me reload this and accept the self signed certificate. So let's do uh, username and password. So here uh, you can see that I have different environments now, right? I have the, the dev environment, uh, um, my production environment, and then the, the, the pipeline, which is a different set of manif manifests. Um, and that's matches to what created here. So let's take a look at the dev, the dev environment. It says everything's in sync. Look at the live manifests here. Um, so this is the um, the development branch. It's right here. And then let's take a look at the production. Right there. So in theory, this should all be the same, right? So yeah, so I have um, my development version here. I have an H2 that says blue and it matches uh, production because they're using the same code base at this point. So that's all, um, uh, everything's green, everything's synced up, uh, we're good to go here. So now um, I'm gonna be switching over to the developer uh, perspective. Um, developer perspective gives the developer a, a set of tool sets that, um, that they need in order to do uh, application development, right? And it's, and it, comes with a, uh, a tour so you can know uh, where where is where, right? I'm gonna skip the tour since I'm already familiar. And then I'm gonna go to the pipeline uh, namespace and I'm gonna go to the pipelines. And as you can see here, um, there is, uh, I set up a pipeline in order, uh, a textile pipeline to do the changes uh, across the environments, right? And so, um, let's introduce a change and see how this works out. So let me go to my Visual Studio. Uh, I have the code up here already. So let's go down and change this H2 from blue to let's say something different, uh, green, right? We're all familiar with that. And let's do a uh, git commit. Git, git add. Uh, get commit and let's go uh, let's go updated uh, to green right something useful for the for the tracking right uh, get push so what what's gonna happen here it's gonna hit that uh, that web hook remember that web hook I showed you earlier from the uh, uh, from the welcome app and that should trigger a, a pipeline run Right, so um, when that webhook, uh, going back to the settings and looking at the webhook here, it sees that I have an, a, a listener here set up for Tekton and that hit the webhook and that fired off a, a pipeline run. So this is gonna go through a few phases. So let's take a look here, see what's gonna go on. So I have a few steps, right? So first I have the step uh, talking about uh, cloning the repo, 
once it clones the repo, it's going to set the image tag um, for a specific version, right? I don't use a floating tag like dev or prod. I actually use um, the specific hash of the git commit as my image tag, and it's going to build and push it into my uh, image repository. Uh, once it does that, it's going to um, it's going to clone the deployment repository, right? My GitOps repository. So this is different than my application repository. Once it clones that, it's going to um, um, edit the image tag on the the GitOps repo to this current one that it's building. Um, part uh, part of this, I have uh, parallel tasks. Right, parallel tasks in Tekton is just uh, tasks that run at the same time. Um, my latest always matches what my dev is, um, and that's just something I do as, as part um, that's independent of cloning the repo. Um, and then once that's done, I'm going to patch the dev repo, right? The, the dev overlay with the new, um, uh, the new image tag. I'm going to commit it to the repo. And I'm gonna, then I'm going to patch production. Right, so once once I um, once I patch production, right, I'm going to create a branch in my production uh, GitOps repo, and I'm going to submit a PR. Right, so this is how I do gating in Tekton: is that I submit a PR uh, instead of automatically pushing it into production. So if I take a look at the logs here, you can see the log for each individual task. I do a git clone. I do um, I do the the commit, and now. Um, I am um, pushing, I'm using Builder to push the, uh, the steps up here. So um, this pipeline could take some time. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to pause here. Oh, um, I'm bringing you back here to show you that I made a commit to, uh, to development. I want to switch back over here and look at the development environment and uh, do a uh, refresh here. So Argo CD sees the fact that the image has changed in the repo. Uh, the image has changed, so therefore uh, Argo CD assumes that, um, since I have this set to auto sync, that I want this at the latest available dev version, um, and it does essentially a rolling, um, a rolling rollout of the new version of the image. So the image tag changed, changed in Git, then Argo CD saw that change and automatically synced it for me. So if I go to my a dev environment, right? Remember that it said blue. Right now they're both matched, dev, prod. Now it says green, right? Same as my commit. Now it says green. Uh, production, though, stays the same as blue. So going back to the pipeline, let's see what happened here. Um, it finished, right? I committed to dev. I patched production, right? So production, the step here is that I'm going to... Uh, Patch, patch the uh, the image, the latest image here, and create a branch, and then create a PR. So then here now it says now you have a new PR. Let's take a look at this PR. So if I go to my GitOps repo and look at this pull request, notice that um, I have a new PR here. This PR here is saying that um, that uh, I'm going to update the image to the the image matching dev into prod. So if I click on files change and take a look at here, um, you can see that my overlays production deployment goes from this tag to this new tag that I that just happened while I built this. So oops, going back to my pull request here, I can, you know, once I've gone through the all the code reviews and all of this, all, all the all the process that you have in place, I can merge the pull requests. You know, once merge, I don't need this branch anymore, so I just delete it. Uh, but if I go back to um, to my Argo here and do a refresh, you can see that it now saw that oh hey, there's been an update in Git. Let me complete. Uh, let me sync that for you, and make sure you're at the version you told me um, that you wanted in Git, which happened to just update since we're using GitOps, right? So now um, the application is done syncing. I can go over to, um, you know, this is the dev version. You gotta go to the production version. I do a refresh and now production shows green. So now they match 
as they do in uh, the Git repo. So um, and anytime I want to make a change, I can either uh, to the code base, I can go back here to Visual Studio, make an update to the code base. If I want to change something like, um, let me go back to my repo, um, like the scale of the application, I would just do a PR to the Git repo and then Argo will reflect that change. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it informative and in how you can use um, uh, Kubernetes native CI CD workflows in order to build your GitOps pipeline. Thank you.